June 2022, Mexico. Residents of the city of Monterey come out to protest. Due to an abnormal drought, the government had to limit the water supply to residents' homes to six hours a day for millions of residents. Water, water, water. People prayed for it, when suddenly it started raining in August. It seemed that all their troubles were over. But it wasn't the end of the story. The rain kept falling, and it became increasingly intense. Floods swept across Mexico. As a result of the floods, more than one and a half thousand houses were destroyed. Thirteen people died, and to help the rest survive, they even had to mobilize the army. But the worst thing is that this isn't even a single case. The number of floods around the world is increasing. There are more and more floods, and they take thousands of lives. And new UNESCO data suggests in less than half a century, a great global flood could happen again. Floods are one of the most unpredictable natural disasters. You can be sure there won't be a volcanic eruption in your area simply because there's no volcano nearby. But floods can happen anywhere as long as there's an ocean, a river, or even a small lake. And most of the world's cities are located near water bodies or artificial reservoirs. There are many factors that can trigger a flood. For example, it can be caused by natural disasters. Myanmar, a country in Southeast Asia, is geographically exposed to almost all types of natural hazards that can trigger flooding. These are tsunamis, earthquakes, and landslides. Despite this, the people of Myanmar were taken by surprise when, in May 2008, they were hit by Hurricane Nargis, which caused flooding. A four-meter wall of water, at a speed of more than 200 kilometers per hour, hit the densely populated delta of the Irrawaddy River, whose local residents were engaged in rice cultivation. Satellite images taken before and after the disaster show that rice fields were flooded and trees and buildings completely disappeared, replaced by piles of rubble. The government said the official death toll was over 22,000, with 41,000 still missing. Although other sources say that 100,000 inhabitants could have died during the disaster. But not only hurricanes can be dangerous, but also ordinary wind. In the Netherlands in 1953, a common cyclone triggered a high tide in the North Sea, which in turn caused a dam to break in the southern part of the country. As a result, about 1,800 people died, and more than 70,000 were forced to evacuate. This event was called the Zeeland Cataclysm. From such stories, it becomes clear that poorly built dams also pose a significant threat. But it also happened that they were destroyed on purpose. In 1938, China experienced one of the few planned floods in history. The state was embroiled in World War II, and Japan invaded its territories. In response, the Chinese government decided to break through the dams on the Yellow River to flood a large area and impede the movement of Japanese troops. So the offensive was suspended, and the enemy even suffered losses. But all this happened at the cost of the death of 800,000 Chinese. And this is the only flood provoked by the Chinese authorities. For example, the government of the country argued that the removal of forests in the Chinese province of Henan was carried out in accordance with the law. However, some environmental organizations claim that deforestation is beyond reasonable limits and is changing the landscape. A densely forested forest serves, among other things, as a barrier to water. It's believed that because of clearing in 2021, heavy rains caused floods. As a result, over 300 people died, and tens of thousands of residents had to be evacuated. You can't be sure that deforestation in your area is carried out according to all standards. In addition, hydroelectric power plants located within your city can also pose a danger. 
In 2015, in the Brazilian city of Minas Gerais, a large amount of poisonous sediment was poured from a hydroelectric power station into the Doce River, raising the water level. Therefore, the river not only burst its banks, but was also poisoned. It claimed the lives of 17 people and forced more than 50,000 people to leave their homes. But the most crucial factor in the formation of floods is, of course, heavy rains. One of the largest floods, triggered by a series of heavy rains, occurred at the beginning of the 20th century in the western part of the United States. Then, the Great Miami River burst its banks and began to flood Dayton, a city in Ohio. This was later called the Great Dayton Flood. At first, the residents didn't panic because a whole network of dams and embankments, modern by the standards of that time, was built around the city. However, it was impossible to stop nature. And at some point, there was so much water that the dams could no longer contain it. In just three days, 18 billion tons of water hit Ohio. Some animals, unable to cope with the flow, found themselves in the most unexpected places. One journalist encountered a pig swimming up the second floor of a lingerie store and a horse standing behind a National Bank cash register. Yes, it may sound comical, but in reality, the disaster looked terrifying. Some animals that could swim managed not only to save themselves, but also to help drowning people. For example, dogs carried baskets of food and water for those who had not yet reached a safe place. Horses and donkeys were used to evacuate people and transport goods. One farmer brought his cow to the second floor. When the ground floor was flooded, his family could not evacuate for quite some time, but they didn't starve to death only because they fed on the animal's milk. As a result of the flood, about 145,000 people died, and more than 3 million lost their homes and property. The water left only after a few months. As you can see, escaping during a flood is very difficult. And the worst thing is that in the near future, most of us will probably have to face this dangerous natural disaster. But are there any chances to survive specifically for you? Just watch this eyewitness video of a flood destroying the iconic New Honeymoon Hotel in Kalama in seconds during last year's monsoon rains in Pakistan. In summer, almost all rooms are occupied and a lot of staff worked at the hotel. As a result, zero people died from the catastrophe in the hotel. Before the water overtook the building, all guests and staff were evacuated. If authorities of your city know about a possible flood in advance and take all the residents to a safe area, you'll have a 100% chance of survival. But unfortunately, nature is most often unpredictable, and if your house starts to flood, you'll have to rely on only yourself. First, you'll need to climb to higher ground. If you live in a two- or three-story private house and you have at least a little time, if possible, take all essential things with you to the top. Completely turn off the electricity in the house as electrical appliances can cause a short circuit when in contact with water. It's best to wait out the flood on the top floor or on the roof, but only if you're sure about the strength of your home. Ma Pet, Tar Ong, and her family, who witnessed the terrible flooding in Myanmar, initially wanted to wait out the disaster in their own home. But the wind began to shake the building, so they went to a relative on a motorboat because the walls of his dwelling were stronger. If you don't have a backup plan, run to the nearest skyscrapers and multi-story shopping centers. There, that car came up with a good idea. She found empty plastic bottles and gave them to her loved ones so that they could stay afloat if they were in the water. And when the stream began to carry the girl away, it was the bottle that helped her not to drown. But at some point, the girl lost it and began to choke. Then she grabbed the nearest coconut tree, so she managed to survive. If you think it's a good idea to get in your car and drive as far away from the flood as possible, 
Look at what happened to the huge SUVs during the torrential flood in Zion National Park in Utah. This video was taken by an eyewitness who barely had time to get his family to higher ground to escape the flood. His camera captured a stranger's car with people inside carried away by the current. But even when you manage to escape, keep in mind that this is not the end. After the water leaves, you need to wait for a notification from the government and only then return home. In this case, you should follow some more rules. Stay away from flooded roads. Stay away from broken power lines. And watch your step when walking. Debris, including broken bottles and nails, can cover the ground after a flood. When you get home, throw away any food that has been in contact with floodwaters. Clean and disinfect everything that got wet because the flood will bring a lot of bacteria. But the worst thing is that these tips may not even be helpful to you. If humanity expects a big flood like those experienced before, it will be virtually impossible to escape. One of the two most severe floods in the history of humankind began as a disaster in Mexico. From 1928 to 1930, China also suffered from a severe drought, followed by a severe winter with heavy snowfall. In March, the fallen snow began to melt. The situation was aggravated by spring precipitation in the summer monsoon season. The water level in the surrounding rivers started to rise to critical levels. For example, in the Yangtze River, in just one month, the water rose by 70 centimeters, although 30 centimeters would be enough to overflow its banks. Massive deforestation also played an important role. Due to the lack of barriers such as trees, the water quickly reached the city of Nanjing, which at the time was the capital of China. The flow became so intense that flood protection systems couldn't withstand water, especially considering that they were not so reliable in China at that time. Although, even dams in good condition would have struggled to cope with this flood. Therefore, the neglected hydraulic structures that protected the coastal houses had little chance. As a result, the wave not only destroyed the homes of local residents, but also washed away the summer harvest along with huge grain reserves. It caused a famine. People had to eat tree bark and weeds, and some even turned to cannibalism. Cases have been recorded of families selling their children to survive. But this was not the last cause of deaths that followed after the flood. Sewerage systems were destroyed and waste was mixed with water, which already contained various microbes. People began to suffer from such deadly diseases as dysentery, typhoid fever, and cholera. And since the families who lost their homes were forced to become refugees, they began to spread diseases further across the country. Over time, measles and smallpox were added to the list of infections. It seemed like it couldn't get any worse. But the flood also attracted many mosquitoes because water bodies are their most comfortable environment. This led to an outbreak of malaria. Flood-related diseases are responsible for 70% of reported deaths among rural families and 87% of deaths in refugee camps. The flood in 1931 in China is considered one of the deadliest disasters in the world. After all, a total of 4 million people died from it. It's even scary to imagine that this could happen again in our time. Although, scientists have suggestions that we're in for a scenario even worse than this. Remember, I said the flood in China is one of the two worst in history. First place is given to the so-called Great Flood, which was mentioned in the Bible. And we may have to witness the second. Humanity should already be ready for a new test in which our lives are at stake. After all, there are many prerequisites that large-scale flooding will soon inundate most of the land on the planet. Scientists have calculated that the number of floods around the world has increased by 15% over the past 10 years. 
And a new study by the U.S. Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has shown that global sea level is rising 25% faster than previously thought. For millions of people, even a one-meter rise in the water level would be a disaster. But here we can talk about as much as five meters. And another factor that can provoke a second worldwide flood is global warming. At the moment, Earth's temperature is one and a half degrees Celsius above the norm. And if no measures are taken, these figures will only grow. Scientists from UNESCO have calculated that due to global warming, glaciers will begin to melt by 2050. Water can completely flood dozens of large cities. Then, the very existence of civilization will be questioned. Just like it was during the Great Flood. The Bible says that several centuries ago, when God saw that people stopped believing in him and began to break the laws, he decided to punish them by sending a gigantic flood to the earth. During the catastrophe, almost all of humanity perished. Of course, scientists perceive religious stories as legends and fiction. Then why is such a myth about a large-scale flood only in different interpretations presented by many people in Japan, the Middle East, Africa, and America? It turns out that such a flood really happened several thousand years ago. The clue was found by geologists William Ryan and Walter Pittman from Columbia University. They studied the so-called climate chronicle of Earth, namely the deposits of ice in Greenland, and they concluded that 10,000 years ago, the level of the world's oceans rose significantly. And about 7,500 years ago, melting glaciers raised the level of the neighboring Mediterranean Sea. Apparently, in the area of the strait, a giant waterfall with a capacity of 200 Niagara Falls was formed, pouring for 300 days in a row. The sea level is estimated to have risen by half a meter per day. The population of coastal regions suffered greatly. This was confirmed in Turkey. At a depth of about 160 meters underground, researchers found traces of an ancient coastline. The remains of wooden buildings stretched along it. This means that the flood destroyed entire settlements. It was the catastrophe on the Black Sea coast that could have formed the basis of the biblical story of the flood. And this may happen again. But which areas will be affected? According to preliminary calculations, the water will flood the entire east coast of the United States, including New York, northern Canada, and the coasts of Latin American countries. The desert in the center of Australia will turn into a vast saltwater lake. The most densely populated part of the continent will be underwater. Many European cities will suffer. London and Venice will disappear completely. The Amazon will burst its banks and destroy Buenos Aires, the coast of Uruguay, and much of Paraguay. The Caspian and Black Seas will double in volume. China and India will suffer less, but they'll still say goodbye to a small part of their territories. The Cardamom Mountains will turn into islands, and almost the entire territory of Russia will be washed off the face of the Earth. Here's what the world map will look like after the glaciers melt. But even if your city escapes this sad fate, do not rush to rejoice. The catastrophe will be followed by a large resettlement of refugees, new deadly epidemics, and basically everything that happened during the Chinese flood. All people on Earth will suffer in one way or another. Maybe we'll even face extinction. There isn't much time left until 2050, but you can put that time to good use. For example, by strengthening the walls of your house or taking part in a rally against the construction of new factories or deforestation, at least you can pack your go bag. What will you begin with? Write in the comments.